Whoa, so I didn't plan on going live tonight. <laughs> it's kind of like a uh, unexpected. I plan on going live usually on, on Saturdays or kind of midweek, but it's been like a hectic last couple of days. Kind of needed to unwind, and <laughs> there's been a couple sales that have been going on recently. And I thought, oh, I did the arrow overview <laughs> uh, re not too long ago, so I really couldn't get into that again. But I, uh, you know, you've already seen my Arrow stuff. And a day I believe DVD is having an Arrow sale right now. Hey, Tim, how's it going? <laughs> but tonight, I thought I'd talk about one of my favorite companies and that I don't think gets talked about enough. Oh, you hope? Thanks, Paulie. I was actually really surprised that I did. I was uh, super tired today, so I'm not sure how long my stream's going to go. But I, uh, <coughs> Kino Lorber is one of my favorite companies. And uh, <coughs> I actually had enough to make a little Kino sale. <coughs> And uh, by, by a little bit from, from the Kino sale this time. <laughs> so everything on the Kino site, like any of the like, other companies, there, whether it be like Redemption or any, any of the Kino stuff that they're doing at all, everything's on sale. <laughs> now, me particularly, although I do get a lot of the Redemption stuff, uh, I actually am a huge fan of the Kino Studio, Lorbro Studio Classics uh, line. That's where you find a lot of their, like, the really cool stuff. So what I thought I'd do tonight... Uh, so Tim, Polly, all you guys that are <coughs> watching right now, I'm going to show you my Kino collection. And if you guys are thinking of ordering from the sale, uh, maybe it'll give you some ideas. Because pretty much everything that's, uh, that's here is, uh, is on that sale. And everything is like drastically marked down. <coughs> and I'll even let you guys know <coughs> after what I chose if you want to know. Or maybe I should wait until uh, I get it come and do like a live unboxing. <coughs> so maybe we'll do that. Sometimes I'll let people know ahead of time. <coughs> but... Anything that has a sticker on it still, uh, basically when HMV was closing out, uh, I grabbed, uh, the last day there, I grabbed all the Kinos and Olives. Hey James, how's it going? I didn't get any from the Diabolik sale <clears throat> because I put like four things in my cart. I was going to get the uh, the Prisoner Scorpion set and I was going to pick up the uh, Bloodthirsty Trilogy <clears throat> and the apartment and uh, maybe Kaltiki. Uh, I know how you feel. Uh, I, this one I just lucked into, like, having a little bit extra to do it. <clears throat> and then I had to just stretch a little bit. Uh, but uh, when I, after I put the things into the, the, the Diabali cart, I checked the shipping. And their shipping goes by USPS. So on, even though I think they had, like, free shipping for so much in, in the U.S., which is fantastic for the U.S., here in, uh, in Canada it was $42.00 for the shipping. So that was going to take away oh, like about half of the money that I would have had to spend on the sale. So uh, unfortunately I had to, I'm going to wait till maybe Arrow puts out those, their next big sale and I'll get Prisoner Scorpion then hopefully and uh, Bloodthirsty Trilogy. Now <clears throat> on to what I promised to talk to you guys about, the Kino stuff. <clears throat> yeah, so anything here that's got a, a price tag on it, yeah it is really, really bad shipping. Uh, it's the, uh, that's the thing. I will. I want to support some of the smaller companies and stuff like that, <clears throat> but it's really hard with really like uh, exorbitant shipping prices, especially right now. Uh, <clears throat> but a uh, Kino shipping is free. So when you buy over, when I think when you buy like fifty dollars in U in the U.S. and a hundred dollars in Canada, then uh, the shipping is is free. So uh, I got free shipping. <clears throat> so I picked up a couple things, but uh. Of course, i got to wait for it to come now, so that's the exciting part. Now, like I said before, if you see stickers on these, that's not what I paid for them. That's actually, I paid a dollar for the ones with, with the stickers on them because that was the last day of HMB selling out. And uh, some of these I haven't opened yet that I really want to watch. Some I've seen before. And first off is one that I have seen before, and that is Candy. Candy is kind of a, it's a different film. It's a big cast in it. It's kind of crazy. Uh, as you can see, Ringo Starr, Marlon Brando, James Coburn, uh, Walter Matthau, just a fantastic cast. And Candy is a, you know, who plays Candy? I can't remember now. Ewa Allen. <clears throat> have a Walmart in your area, you might want to see if they have some DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, we do have a Walmart, but not much to there. It's a fun one. It's a weird one, Tim. Uh, it's very 60s, very 60s. It is a lot for the shipping, James. 
uh, I would love to. Like, I hear a lot of great stuff about Diabolik, and I know they're kind of like a, almost like what you call a mom-pop type company, like just two or three guys. But there's a limit to what I can, what I can unfortunately support. My, if I had unlimited funds, I would love to be able to get stuff like that. Or if I lived in the U.S., or <laughs> it would make it a lot easier for me. I'd have a lot more movies than I have right now. But uh, shipping is the thing that stops and uh, stops me sometimes. Uh, a friend of mine out here, Savannah, uh, lives in Australia, and she was sending a, uh, a movie out to me. So she went to the to the post uh, master there, and basically shipping with the, for the movie in a case like this would have cost like I think like twenty six dollars something like that. So I said, you know, just forget the case, put the movie and the and the cover in, fine. Oh, <laughs> plenty to watch in the meantime. Yeah, we'll get it to those. So Candy is a cool one. Uh, next up is one that was recently put up by Shout Select. I have the original edition. That's the only reason I haven't rebought it yet. Uh, and this has a lot of features on it too. And that is David Lynch's Walled at Heart. I'm a big fan of this movie. Actually, I'm a I'm actually a Nicolas Cage fan. Like obviously not. I think he's makes a bunch of like crazy movies. Uh, but uh, that is Nicolas Cage. But this is one of my favorites. I'm a Lynch fan too. If you guys don't know, I'm a huge David Lynch fan. I did like the new season of Twin Peaks. It was a challenging watch. Yeah, Cage. I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Water Heart's a great movie. It's got a great like uh, soundtrack to it. Uh, of course, Laura Dern is gorgeous in uh, in this movie. Uh, really cool Wizard of Ozzy type thing. Uh, this, of course, is him at his like uh, at his Elvis est. Uh, Nicholas Cage is a huge Elvis fan. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he got with uh, you know with Elvis' daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, basically because he was an Elvis fan. Uh, but yeah, he's pretty much plays an Elvis-type character in this one here. He goes full Alan Elvis. And again, there's a lot of features on here. we got, like, uh, making of documentary, director David Lynch on the DVD process, uh, original making of featurette, so there's a... It's really, he is one of the Coppola's, actually. Uh, he just changed the name. Hey, guy, how's it going? Is Shout Factory releasing that? Yes, they are, actually. They're releasing a, uh, it under the Shout Select label. Yeah, his real name is uh, Nicholas Coppola, but he, uh, he changed it early on uh, to, uh, to Nicholas Cage, kind of to, to forge his own identity, forge his own way. And he hasn't really been, like, I guess, hampered or helped, really, by the Coppola name. He's kind of done it on his own, and I, and I do respect Cage for that, even if you find, we find some of his stuff just a little on the crazier side. I'm a huge fan. I gotta watch this one too. I don't know why I watched this one recently. I'm a huge fan of like Michael Caine. Michael Caine. And uh, that's my Michael Caine impression. Pretty bad, but I do it anyway. Uh, and it's the Holcroft Covenant. Uh, we got Caine and Anthony Andrews. And this one, I guess this is John Frankenheimer. <clears throat> Anything Caine, I pretty much, I love all this stuff, especially his early stuff. I'm a huge fan of like the. Uh, of his early movies. My favorite Michael Caine movie of all time, I actually don't own. And I'm pretty sure Shout Select put it out too. It's called A Shock to the System. Uh, that's a movie I really love. But The Holcroft Covenant, really cool film if you haven't seen it. It's one that I like anyway. But I like anything him. And uh, yeah, commentary again by uh, Frank and Heimer on this one. <coughs> if you could only get one Kino, if you were getting a Kino this time around, you could only get one Kino. I do recommend this one. And I wholeheartedly recommend this one. This is a crazy film. This is an 80s film. This is an action film. This is a weird film. This is an awesome film. And this is Steel Justice with Martin Cove. If you have never seen Steel Justice, you owe it to yourself to watch Steel Justice. I don't want to give away too much. It's very 80s. It's got a great cast. Um, some decent music in there, by the way, as well. And uh, there's actually, a, I think, a big band in this one. I can't remember what their names are. But we got, like, you know, Celia Ward, Ronnie Cox, Bernie Casey, Soon Tech O oh from Missing, Missing in Action 2, Peter Kwong from Big Trouble in Little China, El Leong from, like, Lethal Weapon, Jan Gan Boyd from Assassination, and Sarah Douglas, of course, from Superman 2, <clears throat> among other things. And this is really crazy cool. Um, what's really amazing about this one here is at the beginning of this movie, uh, Martin Cove is going in to like, kind of like do a uh, kind of a rescue type mission. Now he goes in uh, in this like underground bunker, and I think it was over, it's Vietnam or somewhere like that. And the guy's got like there's a rat there, and this rat, I, I kid you not, has a grenade tied to his back. 
Hey, James. <laughs> Get Carter. Get Carter's a fantastic film. <clears throat> Michael Caine has made so many good films, and he's such a great actor. Uh, <clears throat> look, usually it's just a Shock 2 system is one that I saw when I was like, uh, when I was younger, and it kind of stuck with me. Uh, there's a lot better Michael Caine movies. It's just one that stuck with me. My favorite Bob Hoskins film, when I think, when I think about Michael Caine, I think of Bob Hoskins. My favorite Bob Hoskins film is actually in the background right there. What? They shoot horses, don't they? <sighs> Take and pal them. One, two, three. I still got to get those. I don't have either one of those, but those are actually really good ones. <coughs> Another one I really love. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. And I'm, I, I think it's really underrated. And that is, again, another Frankenheimer film. I'm a huge Frankenheimer fan, by the way, guys. <clears throat> 52 Pickup. I love this movie. I truly, really love this movie. The villains are insanely good in this. And Roy Schreider is incredible. Uh, I think this is the one, I'm pretty sure, that has like some adult actors and actresses actually in some, like, uh, in some scenes within the film. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. But this is a really cool, John Glover is in this. He plays a great uh, bad guy. Uh, John Glover, of course, is uh, most, a lot of people know from Smallville. He played Lionel Luther. And uh, <coughs> we got like Clarence Williams III playing a, another cool, crazy character. This is a really awesome film. And the ending of this one just rocks. I love 52 Pickup. It's a favorite Rush Rider film of mine. It really seriously is. Now, out of the, a lot of the comedies, that, the comedies there, this is actually one of my favorite early comedies. And it's a, uh, a Peter Sellers, Peter O'Toole comedy as well, with uh, some gorgeous cast. And that is What's New Pussycat? Again, a really, really fun film. Uh, extremely funny. Uh, Ursula Andress is in this. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you re you try to... Oh, it is a great film. 52 Pickup, if you haven't checked it out. James, it's, it's a really good film. Arrow also put out a good edition of it as well. And I think Arrow has a couple more features, just to let you know, to be completely honest and upfront with you. Uh, they have, like, one that actually talks about the uh, adult actors and actresses that actually had small parts in the film. They kind of, like, point them out. <coughs> Though it has a really cool commentary, I think. Uh, no, this one doesn't have anything else. This one is a pretty, uh, it's a bare-bones one. And I think the Arrow one had one, one featurette. So uh, if you're choosing and you're choosing and you want a featurette, then go for the Arrow edition. But uh, the uh, transfer on, the, on that one is really good. It's just a really good film either way. And right now it's on sale on, uh, on the Kino sale. What's New Pussycat? If you haven't checked it out, it's a good one. And there's, of course, that song that gets stuck in your head. The What's New Pussycat song. <coughs> it's been a while since I've watched this one. And I probably got to rewatch this one again because... Uh... Hey, Kyle and, and Nicole. Kino is awesome. Did you get anything from the Kino sale this time around? It's still going on right now. <coughs> I picked up... Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys now. But I picked up 10 from the Kino sale this summer. <laughs> Billy Wilder's The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes. Really good cast. Actually, decent features on this one as well. Christopher Lee, Mr. Holmes, Mr. Wilder featurette. Uh, doesn't Christopher Lee play... Uh, does he play the brother in this one? I'm pretty sure. I think... I can't remember. Does, does anybody remember this one? Is this the one where Christopher Lee plays Mycroft? I can't remember. <coughs> it has been a while. As you can see, that's one of my earlier uh, keynote buys. This one, kind of cool. Not for everybody. I did enjoy it. And, uh, who? Now, this one's kind of hard to find online when you're looking for, like, information on it because it actually goes under by under a different title. It's a really kind of a different film. Now, I'm a huge Elliot Gould fan, so, uh, and my better half likes kind of weird sci-fi. So, just something the last minute on the sale. Got 8 million ways to die. Astro Zombies. I'm glad you got Astro Zombies. Cherry 2000, Freeway, and Heart of Man. I was looking at Heart of Man. Robo Man. That's it. Perfect. <coughs> I was looking at Heart of Man. Cherry 2000 is one that I want to pick up. I'll probably get it in the, in, in the next sale. And uh, Heart of Man as well. <coughs> but Astro Zombies, tell me, guys, what you think of Astro Zombies when you get it and watch it. I'm really interested in finding that out. It is crazy fun. Roboman, you're good with the names, Tim. <laughs> uh, a classic film, one I think everybody should own. Uh, I'm a huge Billy Wilder fan, and Witness for the Prosecution. A great, like, Tom Power, Melinda Dietrich. Charles Lawton is fantastic in this movie. And uh, <clears throat> just, you know, unlike a lot of my films that I have, this actually is a really class act <laughs> type of movie. A weird, different one for me. 
Now getting back to more of the stuff that you expect from me. The Devil's Needle. Another Tales of Vice and Redemption. <laughs> it's kind of cool. It's uh, basically like uh, like three or four different films. They're like The Devil's Needle <clears throat> inside the inside of the white slave traffic and uh, <clears throat> Children of Eve. And they're like, you know, those, those morality tale type of early ones. I like really early stuff. We're looking at like uh, 1915 to, 19, well, 1913 to 1916. So uh, obviously, you know, silent tales of like stuff you shouldn't do. <clears throat> Crazy Legs Crane. You guys know I'm a Depato Freeling fan. My better half loves these. Uh, needless to say, there may be some of these coming actually uh, in the uh, in the newest order. But we love the Depato Freeling cartoons. So next up is Sheriff Hoot Flute. Hoot Got that one as well. Love the animation on these. And uh, I love the fact that uh, they all have these here... Uh, Pencil drawing type of uh, covers, reversible covers. For uh, an animation fan, that's almost like a, it's almost a must. It's like I expect to see them on a lot of other classic ones now, just because the uh, they're just so cool. Uh, the Blue Racer, and of course, this is Pink Panther Volume One. And upstairs, uh, which I don't have downstairs right now, is Volume Two of Pink Panther. This is uh, 1964 to 1966, and Volume Two is 1966 to 1968. So I have both volumes of the Pink Panther. <coughs> now these here are their, uh, the Library of Congress ones. So I got Hell's House. I'm a huge Betty Davis fan. I love these covers, by the way. I should have brought a drink down with me. <coughs> and of Human Bondage was probably one of my first Betty Davis movies I ever saw. I had this on like an EP VHS tape. Uh, Betty Davis and Leslie Howard. Uh, this is where I kind of fell in love with Betty Davis, with, uh, with this film... Here was a very early film that I saw of her. <coughs> and a uh, classic French film. What's the topic of the night? 13th Wolfman. Tonight we're talking about Kino Lober. Uh, Kino's got their big, massive sale going on. Still going on right now. It's going on for a little bit longer. And uh, I just actually had enough money to, uh, <coughs> to pick up 10 Kino titles. Some are, some are animation. Some are super cheesy stuff. <coughs> One might have... Chuck Norris and Henry Silva. We'll leave it at that. <clears throat> uh, next up is an Erica Romer film. Hey, uh, definitely. Uh, oh, I'm just getting into the uh, to a lot of the uh, the ones that you're probably interested in anyway for the Kino stuff. <clears throat> it's a really good sale. If you uh, all the Redemption titles are on sale as well, everything across the board that Kino does is on sale uh, this time around. Because I do collect a lot of the, the KL Studio Classics line, I actually uh, limited myself to uh, to that line. But uh, there's a lot of really cool like <clears throat> action and adventure and and horror and stuff in there. I didn't know, I don't think I picked up a lot of horror this time around, but I did get some really cool cheesy stuff and uh, some stuff that I really want to see. Pauline at the Beach. It's a coming of age film done by Eric Romer. I'm a big fan of Eric Romer. <clears throat> so if you're a fan of his, that's actually not a bad one. Next up is White Zombie. This one is horror. This is from the... I do like this one. This is my favorite edition. Hey, 4K Cinema HD. Did you get in on the Kino sale? <coughs> it was a last minute thing. How does Kino rank against Arrow? <coughs> Kino's a great company. <coughs> now, if you are buying Mario Baba, then you buy Arrow. Uh, because you'll have to... A lot of, some, in some cases, you'll have to buy the movies twice with Kino because they'll put out one edition, the Italian edition, and then they'll put out the American edition. Whereas in the Arrow editions, all the editions are there in one set. Mm. Now, I, <clears throat> I actually love this transfer on White Zombie. There's a, something about this... A friend of mine had the other one, and I had this one, and they swore by the other one. And I'll watch this one. I swore by this one. Uh, neither one are, are perfect, but uh, there's some cool special features on it that I want as well. Got the two Vava collections, which were the town versions. Yeah, I, I love Vava stuff. Can't spend funds now. It is a great sale. And I, it was kind of a last minute thing. We had a little bit that, of like edgeway that we could do that we didn't expect to have. So we actually, we grabbed up some Kino stuff because my better half collects Kino as well. 
So we looked at the Diablo League sale, uh, but $42 for shipping was too much. for and That's for two Americans, so that's, for me, would be around $70 just for shipping. Yeah, Kino does have an app for the hidden gems. It got buried during the time release. Oh, perfectly. Uh, they do, and you're going to see a lot of them there. This was a, was a cool one. But what, why did I get this one? There's an auto commentary on here, an interview. Dual edition, oh yeah, includes both a digitally re restored version of the film as, as well as a unenhanced film. So there's two versions of the film on here. That may be why I got it. <coughs> this one here, again, another one of the dollar ones, uh, is <coughs> Yuli's Gold. And I'll be honest with you, hey, Ben, I'm glad to see you here. I uh, honestly, oh, Angel with the Dirty Faces. That makes me cry, man, every time I see that one. I saw that one the first, I was, might have been like seven or eight the first time I saw it. Uh, one of my early Cagney films. And, uh, oh, man. Let's say a prayer for a boy who couldn't run so fast. <clears throat> Paraphrasing, something like that, though, right? Uh, Yuli's Gold. I'll be honest with you, I don't really remember this movie. Uh, I love Peter Fonda, but uh, to be honest, uh, I think I've seen this like a long time ago. But uh, as you can see, it's not even at the case for this time. Not being overlooked. I like. Uh, I'm a huge Peter Fonda fan. <clears throat> Though I, I'm, I'm a big fan of his like his biker stuff and that as well. I, I do like him, but he's like he's a good actor and he's solid. And I think a lot of people really don't like. Uh, don't notice him as much as they should. I do think he's like a guy that is underrated. This is one, I think they did this with Scorpion releasing. <laughs> is it Scorpion they did this with? They did this with another company. I know they did because it's a different looking one. You just got back from seeing Heredity. Did you like it? MGM. did this with MGM. <clears throat> and it is at the Earth's core. I love this cover, by the way, guys. And I think, is this one the dual cover? Yeah, it is. I love these movies. These are, these are cheesy. They're fun. Uh, American International. I think of this almost like a Namicus type one because, you know, the style that's done in. <coughs> and Peter Cushing. <clears throat> Didn't Olive Films also put it at their score? I think so, actually. Uh, I've got a few olives here. I was going to do like a, uh, an overview of those. If I got enough time at the end of this video, I only got like a, a very small selection of olives, so I might show them at the end. <clears throat> Do I have On Golden Pond and Blue or DVD? I don't actually. Uh, I did like that movie. Uh, now, when I was the first time I saw it, I was really young, and I went into it to uh, to see Jane Fonda because I was a huge Jane Fonda fan. Uh, <clears throat> I thought she was like gorgeous. And then there was these old people in it too, and I'm like, oh, do I really like this? So it took a while for me to like. Uh, to gain the liking that I get later on. When I saw it when I was really young, I wanted to see more Jane Fonda. So, yeah. This one is, it's something. Sinbad of the Seven Seas. Anybody get this one? So, <clears throat> no feet. Great transfer, though. Uh, and, oh, it's... oh, man. This is so crazily bad but fun. Nicole, Kyle, see this? John Steiner, I'm not joking, John Steiner from Tenebrae uh, <clears throat> is the, uh, oh you haven't seen this in 13th Wolfman? It is bad but it's bad, it, it's really bad but in, in a kind of a good way. Enzo Castellari, I think that's how you pronounce his name, did this one. <clears throat> and if you know Enzo Castellari well, if you don't know Winslow Castellari, really quick. He made this here, the Bronx Warriors trilogy. It's pretty much known for that. Uh, so you see the New Barbarians, the Escape from the Bronx, uh, Bronx Warriors. That's, uh, that's him. That's uh, this director right here. And uh, <laughs> super crazy. Gr kind, of, kind of a decent cast. So we got like uh, Lou Fregno in it, uh, Steiner. We got like this... Uh, I'm pretty sure the girl from the movie Alienator plays a small role in it. If you remember that film, that cheesy film. <coughs> you gotta see Sinbad, guys. Yes, oh, Great White. Is that one out? <coughs> I, I kinda need that one. 
but no, you got to see this. There's some like ADR in this. There's like a, an almost like a, a story book telling sequence that just check it out. In a film that's pretty cool, and, but not exactly what you think it's going to be, is a Robert Hooks and Paul Winfield in Trouble Man. Now, Trouble Man's a black exploitation film, but it's not an over the top black exploitation film. It's actually pretty cool. Just bootlegs. Yeah, The Last Shark. They need. Is there. Is that one not out because of like copyright reasons? <coughs> because they should finally have its day. Trouble Man's a really good movie. It's not like an over the top black exploitation one, like some of the ones that you see. It's not like a. I wouldn't say it's a shaftish one, <coughs> but I, I did enjoy it. Uh, this one's more of a kind of a fun, just an easygoing film, an easy watch, uh, you'd, I'd call it. And that, because I'm a huge James Coburn fan and uh, Hair in Your Pocket. I liked it. Uh, no one really have like a, a, a tremendous amount to say about it. It's just one that I found really fun. You guys know I love Bronson. The Demon Wind? Definitely. Uh, it's got a limited edition slip cover. It's really good. House by the Edge of the Lake. I forgot about that one, Route 13th Old Man. I really did. <coughs> I don't think I've mentioned it on here, but 13th Wolf Man, and I hope he has mentioned it, does the Dorkening, which you guys should all check out, by the way. Universal Spirit. I know, man. The thing about getting the George Carlin Blu ray set that came out last month. I love George Carlin. He's actually one of my all time favorite comedians. I have a, uh, somewhere here, I've got like a, hold on a second. Oh, Casper Van Dien, I said, yeah, I know, you had a couple people on, didn't you, tonight? So, yeah, guys, if you have not seen The Dorkening uh, or listened to The Dorkening that's uh, done with 13 Wolfman, it's a really cool ca uh, podcast interview show that I do recommend you check out. Uh, he's been very, like, humble, not mentioning it on here, but he really should. <laughs> George, I love George Carlin and everything, man. He's just, he's the man. This one here has, like, uh, uh, five, like, conf concerts and a uh, sixth one <coughs> some of the uh early stuff he did <coughs> but yeah i'm a huge george Carlin fan assassination charles bronson i like anything bronson really and again this is the golden globus one you know so it's canon so gotta love the stuff <coughs> and i also i'm a huge fan of burt reynolds <laughs> sometimes that's good sometimes that's bad sam whiskey Fun little film. I'm a huge Angie Dickinson fan. Clint Walker's in this as well. Uh, so, you know, that's that's a really decent cast. Now, one that has a really great cast, but I'm still not sure if I like it or not, <clears throat> is Fuzz. Fuzz is different. It's very favorite 80s Bronson's Assassinations. Assassination? That is, a, that is a cool one. Have you seen this one with Burt Reynolds? Um... Guys, this one here is is fun. <clears throat> it's got a great cover. You got a great cast. You got Burt Reynolds, Jack Weston, Tom Skerritt. But it is odd. <clears throat> and it's uh, done by the guy that did uh, the did eighty seventh precinct, the uh, the series of books, and that. So that's it's kind of like that. It's kind of an eighty seventh precinct type of thing. It reminds me if I had to put this like anything. Raquel, yeah, Raquel Welsh, that is her. She has like a a part in the movie. It's like it's like Barney Miller, sort of. It's got a Barney Miller feel to it, but not as tonally balanced as Barney Miller. You know what Barney Miller was? It was like a a seventies, like eighty, early eighties, like a cop show set in a precinct for, for White Lightning. White Lightning's awesome. We're getting there. <clears throat> uh, I like Cop. I don't own it yet. Uh, I love that film. I'm not such a big fan of James Woods. I love James Woods as an actor. As a person, I think James Woods is cool, cool for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, which is a shame because he's such a cool dude, acting-wise. Not real life, but acting-wise. In real life, kind of creepy. Kind of a creepy guy, but uh, I do have a few of his films. Best Sellers, a uh, favorite of mine. And uh, I got that one like on the MGM release. I don't have any the newer Blu-ray bestseller. There is a newer bestseller, right? Boston's Cop tried to find a mad bomber extorting money from the city. Yeah. Do you have any seasons that Orange is the New Black Tom Blue? Not yet. I would love to, actually. Super Fuzz. Super Fuzz. Did you know uh, I saw that one in theater? Um, you love Bernie Miller? Yeah, me too. 
<clears throat> I, I gotta get Brian Miller down the road. It's one of those shows I watched a lot when I was younger and uh, that I, for some reason, I haven't gotten any of, the, any of the seasons of yet. I really need to get that one. Uh, Super Fuzz, by the way, I saw it in theater. Uh, I was uh, pretty young. And they showed it as a double feature. They showed Super Fuzz, and it has, I'm pretty sure that's Terrence Hill, right? And they showed it with one of the, uh, an early, like, uh, what's her name? The girl that eats the nails, uh, Pippi Longstocking. Pippi Longstocking uh, was uh, kind of a double feature. And as you guys just mentioned, so somebody mentioned, just mentioned here, White Lightning. Love this movie. <coughs> uh, of course, I love both of the films in this series. I wish there would have been more. Uh, I really do. I, I like that. There, of course, there's another one, which I've, I've got here as well. You'll see. And it's like a two-part interview. So this is this part one or part two? This part one. So White Lightning is this, is original. There's that sequel to White Lightning, of course. Awesome little film. And the sequel to White Lightning is Gator. And again, I love Gator as well. I thought it was actually, an, again, a really good film. It was kind of before Burt Reynolds had... Yeah, White Lightning is a fun movie. It's a cool movie, and you got a great cast in it. I, I like Gator as well. It's before Burt Reynolds had too much of a persona to actually step out of the Burt Reynolds persona and actually do some stuff. Uh, around the time you got Smokey and the Band and stuff like that, I love those movies, but they did kind of box Burt Reynolds in for a while. Uh, later on, you get to see like, stuff like Sharky's Machine and like some really good stuff, but it, for a while, they did get boxed in. Uh, Fort Apache of the Bronx, I have not seen that one since I saw it in theater. 4K. I mean, the last time I saw it was in theater. Lauren Hutt. No. <laughs> yeah, this is a cool one. Uh, Jerry Reed, as always. <clears throat> yeah, they were. Uh, but they were they were kind of like the... You've seen, you haven't seen Gator? Oh, definitely see Gator. It's, it's really cool. It's a sequel. Top three go-to fun popcorn-type movies. I don't know if I have a top three. Uh, but, you know, with popcorn-type movies, that's actually... Have I seen Hercules movies with Lou Fringo? Yeah, actually, I originally didn't see it because of Lou Fringo. I'm a huge Sybil Danning fan. And uh, I went into, uh, I think one of them has Sybil Danning in it. <clears throat> and so I went in to see that, thinking I'd probably see more of Sybil Danning, like I would in like, movies like They're Playing Fire than I would. Uh, but Lou Fringo is very much a family-friendly guy with his films. You'll, you'll notice that if you watch a lot of his movies. Uh, I did find them fun. They're cheesy. They're not good films, but they're entertaining to watch films. Uh, there's a difference, I think, between like the uh, films that are going to be like just they're entertaining to watch films, and like you know this is a classic film. And for me, I find in a lot of cases that those lines cross. And uh, I do uh, I love a lot of pe films that I, I adore a lot of films that people would cons are consider like to be bad films. A slower one. I wish this was better paced. I do like it, uh, Malone. Yeah, this it reeks of a little bit of lost potential. It, it's a fun film. Burt Reynolds does a good job. It is a bit slow paced though. It's not the usual Burt Reynolds type of film. I do like it. I do like where it was going. I wish it would have got there a little bit faster with a little bit more action. But still, uh, I'm glad I got it. Really good, really fun film there. This is one that not a lot of people talk about. It's a set that Kino put out. It's probably one of my favorite sets that Kino put out. And uh, I think I'd seen like one or two of these movies before, but I hadn't seen them all. And that is the breaking in. Yeah, good Burt Reynolds film. Fantastic Burt Reynolds film. Is the OSS 117 five film collection. Now, <laughs> these are a series of like films. These are French films uh, done and really good ones. Uh, the first two star Curran Matthews from like, you know, Sinbad fame and well, Kerr Matthews done a lot of stuff. If you got a, if you got the Kino, like if you got the indicator like hammer sets, then he's in Maniac, for instance. He's the lead star of that one as well. Um, Kern Matthews was actually a, he's, he's got a, like a really good chemistry with the ladies in this, and uh, he just was an incredible actor. Now, that uh, the the one is the the best one though is the second one, uh, Panic in Bangkok. It's got Robert Hussein who's also a, a prolific French actor. And this is when it gets into more like James Bondish territories with, uh, with the second one. Uh, the other ones would have like uh, different actors. Frederick Stafford would be in the uh, third and the fourth. And if you want to know what John Gavin would be like playing James Bond, he's actually in the uh, plays OSS 117 in the fifth film. He's actually a really fun film. So if you haven't checked him out, I do recommend it. Uh, the set is actually fairly inexpensive right now. A lot of the early sets are. Next up is... 
Will I be getting the vinegar syndrome too? <clears throat> I want to. I, want, I can't get it right now. I do want to get it down the road. I'm a huge Mary Warnock fan. Uh, I do have the Blood Theater on that uh, on the DVD that came out. I'm not sure if that one's still available now. I don't. I I couldn't, uh, James. I I add, went to put in my cart and it was sold out, so I didn't get to get it. But uh, it's one I, that I will pick up down the road because I do love The Outer Limits. It's one of my favorite shows. I grew up watching it, especially the original series, the one that the ones they're putting out. They only did two seasons, but uh, I do want to have them both. It would have been uh, like a, a no-brainer for me. Put it in the cart out of stock now, coming in later. We wanted to make our order tonight. We had a limited amount of funds we could do, and that would have uh, been a really good one. Uh, but at the end of the day, it wasn't there, so I had to pick up other ones. Yes, The Outer Limits Season 1 is on Blue from Kino. So actually, uh, it's not in stock right now. <laughs> Keep an eye on it. Hopefully it'll come in stock again before the sale is over. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's on for half price, and it's on both Blu-ray and DVD. And they do they put a lot of features, a booklet, all kinds of cool stuff. I think James has it. And uh, James Hayes? I'm not sure if James Hester has it, but I know James Hayes has it. <clears throat> have I seen Red Mob? I don't have that one yet. Uh, Master with Lee Van Cleef. I want the set too. We had limited funds, and uh, I really want the Master. It was only $23 in the sale too, by the way, guys. But uh, there's, I wanted to get a couple different ones. The first, Power. Yeah. I got uh, that one on. I was going to get that one recently, and I... I was like, man, I really need to get the first power. I don't have the first power in my collection. I just forgot I had it. But uh, I will pick up the Kino down the road because I'm actually a fan of that film. I'm a Lou Diamond Phillips fan. My favorite Lou Diamond Phillips film, though, is obviously La Bamba. Season 2 comes out in November. Did anybody see that indicator for Ray Harryhausen's birthday? But all the indicator, all the Ray Harryhausen sets, the Sinbad, and the two... Uh, Ray Harrios and volumes on sale for like 99 bucks. I already had two of them, so I, you know, it was no good for me, but it was for people who didn't have it. Peter Sellers' The Party. Peter Sellers improvises a lot of this film. It's one of his most genius roles, in my opinion, and he does amazing in it. He is, uh, it is one of the, it is funny. It is funny all the way through. I love this movie. And Nicole and Kyle, since you guys are here, I might want to mention Astro Zombies. <laughs> Astro Zombies is one of my favorite Kino pickups. This is, this is Ted V. Michaels. If you guys have not seen Ted V. Michaels before, he, uh, he makes a lot of, he made a lot of like really kind of cool cheesy films. I can recommend, oh, oh, you are in for an experience, guys, with Astro Zombies. Anybody here seen Astro Zombies? Nicole and Kyle just bought that one from the Kino sale. They got a comic. Doesn't that have a gorgeous cover? It also has the MST3K version on it. So, uh, James knows all about that one too. You got Corpse Grinders. Do you like Corpse Grinders? This is better than Corpse Grinders. Like, hands down. Uh, Corpse Grinders is fun, uh, but Astro Zombies is a more fun film. And look at the cast. So uh, we got like uh, John Carradine in this one here. We have uh, Wendell Corey. And I think it's pretty. Is this Wendell Corey? I think he's drunk in this one. I'm not sure. Uh, and Tura Santana, who, she, who we like to use. He actually used her. In his uh, <clears throat> one that a vinegar syndrome that if you don't have Nicole and Kyle, I do recommend the uh, yeah, exactly. Corpse Carnage is fun, but not beware the blob type fun. This is beware the blob type fun. If you like beware the blob, you'll love Astro Zombies. I don't want to give it away, it's got great features on it. It's got the MS23K soundtrack, like commentary of oh, the Rift Track commentary, sorry, uh, with Mike Nelson and. Kevin Murphy and who, who's that one? Bill Corbett. Yeah, perfect. So all three of them. It is great. It is fantastic. It is cheesy, fun, and it's probably, for me, it's Ted V. Michael's best film by far, and uh, I really love it. <clears throat> War Gods of the Deep. Vincent Price. I'll get anything Vincent Price. Not on blue, actually. <clears throat> I do have the complete Twilight Zone collection, but I didn't want the blue set. If I can find that one cheap down the road, I'll pick it up. But they put out an amazing DVD set that included, uh, and with great quality, uh, the complete original series and the complete 1980 series in an amazing box set. And uh, the day that I got Amazon Prime, the very day that I got Amazon Prime, they had a flash sale on that Twilight Zone box set. And I got the very last copy of it. It's one of my most prized possessions. I'm a huge Twilight Zone fan. 
it actually had a comic book, a, a collector's comic book of the Dell Twilight Zone. And there was four different comic books, Twilight Zone comic books, so you didn't know which one you'd get when you picked up the, uh, the box set. It's actually really cool, and I do recommend it. Uh, Blu-ray is fantastic, but the DVD, it, it just beat it for me. Sometimes, sometimes DVD is better, and in this case, for me, it was. Some people are going to say, you know, oh, but it's not the Blu-ray quality. No, it's got DVD, and it's really good. Fun little film. Didn't enjoy it. Speaking of films I enjoyed that are really weird, this is a slasher film, and this one is with Scorpion releasing. How many total stu Kino Studio classics you got? Well, you find out, actually, you're releasing. I'll count them at the end. Well, the Great Shows, uh, I, I would agree. <clears throat> Twilight Zone is an amazing series. I still need to get a uh, Night Gallery. You're buying movies for <laughs> Yeah, I, I've got to that point, James. Uh, I was going to, yeah, like Jess said, with the first power. You've done it too. I know you've, you've, you've had to do it. You've got on You underrate your collection, James. You've got a great collection of stuff. I've seen some of the stuff that you, uh, that you put on, like on Instagram and stuff like that. You've definitely been buying more stuff than me recently, and you have, some, you have an amazing collection. So uh, never underrate your collection. You have this one. To All a Good Night. This is directed by David Hess, the late David Hess, who was probably best known for you know, movies like Last House on the Left and uh, Hitchhike. And of course, my favorite, uh, the uh, last, you know, last House, oh my God, on Dead, Dead End Street, is that the name of it? No, Last House on the Left, no, no, what am I looking for? Yeah, I'm actually, I love the live streams. Who do you think has the best collection on YouTube? <clears throat> I don't know. Do I rate up there? <clears throat> I'm sure there's everybody. It depends on like what you like. I uh, for what I like, <clears throat> I got a decent collection. I think that a lot, it was by the edge of the park. Thank you. I've got like three different copies of that film, uh, guys, and I could not remember the name of it for life for the life of me. I, that's how big of a fan I am. I got the Code Red edition. I got the Shriek Show edition. I've got another edition as well. Um, but uh, it's a favorite film of mine. And what David has directed this. This is a crazy film. It is a killer Santa film. It is. Uh, Harry Reams, actually, the adult star Harry Reams has a kind of a role in this. Uh, shows that you know, he can actually act, but you can actually see that in his, in his adult films because he actually does acting in between. Uh, but um, Jennifer uh, Runyon actually is in this one. And uh, she's really cute. <clears throat> if you don't remember Jennifer Runyon. Yep, there she is right there. <clears throat> I wouldn't say this is a good film. But I'd say it's a, it's a fun film. Charles in Charge, exactly. Uh, Jennifer Runyon actually married uh, Roger Corman's son, and she stopped, uh, she stopped acting. I think the last, one of the last things she did was probably when the Karen, was Carnosaur. Uh, I think she was in Carnosaur. I know it was one of those early films, anyway. This is fun. This is cheesy. Yeah, nephew. That's Roger Corman's nephew. So she's not. So I'm guessing that they're not part of that uh, civil su that suit between Roger Corman and his sons. Then, so that's good. She, she's a, to the nephew, not the son. That's that's a bit better. Ape, in 3D, and uh, yeah, it's actually a uh, real 3D. So uh, definitely uh, worth checking out. Fun little film. Gene Corman's son. Tim, you know your stuff, man. <clears throat> Uh, so all the drama on Todd's channel, crazy. Uh, drama? I guess I'm not clued in. Uh, sorry guys, uh, I, I kind of say to the drama stuff. Uh, Nicole Eggert, uh, Charles in Charge, Trolls. Brian Tennell did an amazing review. Uh, Internet Trolls for... Uh, When it comes to certain channels, I, oh, I have to stay out of the, uh, the equation on when, it, when it comes to that, to that one. Uh, but unfortunately, trolls are like a thing that we put ourselves on here. Why are the covers inverted? Uh, because, uh, Mr. McDonald, uh, uh, I need to see your comments. So... If I was to uh, turn it around, which is what I would have to do, 
I'd be able to show you this, but it wouldn't be able to come back on you. So that's why the toes are inverted right now. I'm working on that. Uh, unfortunately, the only workaround right now is to actually turn this around, but then I can't comment. And I can do, I can turn it around when I'm doing like a podcast type video, when I'm doing basically talking, but when I'm doing a live video, it makes it much harder. So hopefully it doesn't bother you too much. I, uh, I do try to, if there's something that really needs to be noticed, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of find out. But yeah, I don't wear the drama. Try to save the drama stuff. Uh, trolls are, if you would come on YouTube, uh, you put yourself in front of a camera, uh, no the laptop, connect them together. I've actually thought about that. Some mentioned that actually. Uh, a little bit late, but you're still there's still a few more to go. Some cool stuff. So welcome, Carlos. Uh, but uh, yeah. What do you do? I mean, like some people are gonna like you on YouTube. Some people aren't. That's the thing. You enjoy the stream tonight. I'm going to bed. Ah, see you Ben in the next stream. And uh, Yangari. Bye, Yangari. So, Yangari. This got remade. I think Brandon did this one as well. Me and Brandon Tenold got very similar tastes in uh, in films. Uh, Brandon is also Canadian, by the way. So, uh, and as as is my favorite, some of my favorite towns are uh, they actually turned to be Canadian. I didn't even know it. So uh, Brandon Tenold is uh, in Ontario, I think. And uh, uh, Brandon Tenold, B R A N uh, Brandon. And T N O Tenold. Uh, yes, that is a really great transfer on this one here, by the way. And uh, it's really cool. There's a commentary on here as well. Uh, a fun little film. When Gary dances, it's like you don't expect to see it happening, but it happens, and uh, it's awesomeness. That little by drummer with Waldo. Speaking of really cool movies, that probably shouldn't be. Brandon's thumbnails are funny. Uh, yeah, he does some really good stuff. Uh, uh, Brandon, uh, Fan by Flicks. If you haven't checked out Fan by Flicks, he's really good too. And he's very much in the in the, in the vein of like a Brandon. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thanks. Uh, I'm still getting some. I've got like 10 more uh, keynotes coming, actually, Andy. So, uh, oh, Fan by Flicks. Check him out, guys. He's really good. And of course, so well, as in like a bigger YouTuber that's actually originally from my area from this area right here like we're not north no north, north sydney but just a few hours away uh if you've ever heard of phelan uh his girlfriend is obscure lupa uh from they're both from well she, he's from uh, halifax a question about what is the worst horror franchise in your opinion uh, worst horror franchise See, a lot of people would go with like the obvious being Hellraiser because not a lot of the films are actually Hellraiser, really specific. But I do kind of like some of them. I do find the later ones kind of like uh, bad. The Kitty, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a crazy film. This, if you haven't seen Beware the Blob, you should. It's really crazy. It, almost all the lines are like it's improvised. But uh, I don't know. Worst franchise ever. See, I like the Leprechaun franchise too, but. Uh, the re reboot almost makes that one the worst franchise just just for that alone. The reboot is horrible. It's uh it's probably the one of the worst reboots I've ever seen. So the guy trying to rest the kids. Uh, Beware the Blob. The great cast: Larry Hagman, of course, J.R. Ewing. Uh, well, he did this movie. Exactly. Uh, he was actually convinced to do it. The beer and the flower. <laughs> There's so many scenes in this movie that are super crazy. Garrett Graham's in this movie, by the way, guys. So I'm a huge fan of Garrett Graham. So if you've seen Phantom of the Paradise, he's in that. He's in like a lot of movies. Terror Vision, he's in that one as well. Uh, now we're going to get to a extremely underrated. And actually, if I'm correct, Brandon Tennold, literally, Cindy Williams from Vern Shirley is in. Yes, he is actually. Just did this movie on his channel. And it's Highway to Hell. If you haven't seen Highway to Hell, I, I really do recommend this film. It's a fun film. It's uh, Chad Lowe and Christy Swanson's in this one. Uh, to see the guy there, that uh, that cop, uh, that's actually C.J. Graham. Yeah, 4K Cinema. Exactly. Great film. And C.J. Graham, most people know as uh, well as Jason from Part 6 of uh, Friday the 13th. And, uh, you know, Jason Lives. Yeah, he, he was an amazing Jason, actually. Uh, I wish he got, got to play it again. Uh, incredible cats a bunch of like cameos in this one like from ben stiller and like uh, his mom and dad his, his uh sisters in this one uh, also i think uh, gilbert godfrey is hitler right 
This is the one, right? Gilbert Godfrey's Hitler. Yeah, pretty sure. Every horror fan should have this movie in their collection. I love this movie. Some people hate it. The guy that wrote it hates the film. I think it's an amazing adaption of the stuff that he did. Lita Ford? Is he Lita Ford in this movie? I did not know that. Okay, I gotta watch that again. <clears throat> what role is she? Do you know what role she plays? I bet you I like, she was right in front of my eyes and I just didn't see her. She's not like the prostitute one. Is she the one that like basically tells them like the road to hell is, you know, sex and drugs and rock and roll? Is that Lita Ford? Was that Lita Ford? I can't believe it didn't pick I've seen Lita Ford in concert. I can't believe it didn't pick up on that. Uh, <clears throat> Rawhead Rex. This is the one, guys. Own this movie. They put out a lot, they put a lot of work into this movie. And if you want to see Kino putting out quality, cool horror, get stuff like this when they put it out. They put a lot of work into this film. And it is the best. I I love Arrow Video, but I love this edition uh, more. I, yeah, I, I do agree. I think like look at this here look, look at the the work that's put into this cover it's an amazing cover uh the features on this by the way guys so you got like audio commentaries interviews the more interviews more interview like a ton of interviews there's a booklet um uh, yeah she, so yeah the hitchhiker so yeah what's her then okay <clears throat> i can't believe i didn't pick up on that i'm so ashamed of myself one draw dreams are you talking about the pre scene or are you talking about the kids scene? Uh, the desecration of the pre scene? The kids scenes are pretty what the hell because you don't expect that either. <clears throat> Is my battery okay? You're getting some audio distortion at the end? It might be my microphone. Hopefully not. It could be my voice too. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a long day. Do I think it'll go to print? I don't think this one's a limited edition as far as I know. I want the howling, yeah. The cemetery pre scene, yeah. Again, you see there's another cover in there. And we even have like a third, the original cover that most people have seen of Rawhead Rex. This one right here. There's a booklet there. <clears throat> Honestly, guys, Rawhead Rex is a must. And how can you live your life without seeing the pissing on the kind of evil pre-sequence? It's a must. Again, another one of my HMV. No, they pissed on a priest. Like an evil priest. Uh, trust me, dude, you gotta see this movie. <clears throat> and when you say, got, you know, a, a gigantic monster peed on a priest that was evil, and you're like, wait, that sounds really insane. And then you say, oh, it's a Clive Barker film. And then you're like, okay, that makes sense. You know, if you read any Clive Barker, <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Um, Ambush Bay, it's a fun little film. You O'Brien, Mickey Rooney. We kind of like these ones. We haven't are we seen this one. We just haven't watched this one yet. Again, it's a dollar. Angels Die Hard, a bunch of eggs. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> they go even farther. The 1988 re reboot of The Blob is awesome. It is amazing, Paul. Uh, I'm a huge fan of that film. Uh, it's I go back and forth. It almost tops the original for me. I'm not going to lie. I really do. I think I may actually like it a bit more than the original. Uh, Kevin Dillon, Shawnee Smith. Great, great film. Yeah, this one's still sealed. I bought this one at HMV when it was closing out the very last day. So I paid a dollar for this. Does the, it did have an American release in uh, The Blob, the 1988 one. It had an American release of Through Twilight Time. <clears throat> I've got that one here, actually. It's out of print now. <clears throat> but uh, definitely worth checking out. I think it's in Australia too. If uh, Savannah's not on here tonight, but uh, or, or Andrew, but I think it's in Australia as well. Stephen Queen was here on the original. It was, and he did a good job. Who disliked Twilight Time? I can understand why. Have you ever heard the interview that Twilight Time did early on with like was I'm not sure if it was Screamcast or Shockwave, one of those guys? Uh, he didn't come off well, not in my opinion. Came off a little bit like uppity. Did you get any sale? Yes, I did, um, but this time I'm not going to tell you guys which ones I got until I open them live on air and when I get them come. I got 10. The Secret Invasion. Again, these type of films. We're just huge fans of these, uh, you know, bunch of guys type of films. 
You know, I like what Twilight Time releases. Sophie, I just have an issue with some of the stuff that they put out. Uh, kind of like Code Red. I like a lot of stuff that Twilight Time, that Code Red releases. But uh, Code Red, I like sometimes. My favorite supernatural comedy. Love at First Bite's definitely up there. That's for sure. Savannah, I was just talking about you, actually. You guys got the blob, the 1988 version over there in uh, Australia, right? I actually got Combat Shock. I didn't order the Severn one. I, I do want to get it. Uh, welcome back. You actually got in. I did not expect to do the stream tonight. Certain Fury, Tata, Moniel, Irene, Irene Cara. Again, Peter Fonda. You guys know I'm a Peter Fonda fan. And Moses Gunn. Cool stuff. Yeah, Kino Classic. I was hoping you would have got the John Rowland. I wanted the John Rowland Vampire set. It was just a little bit too pricey for me right now. Combat Shock is the same movie as Zombie 4. No, actually, Combat Shock is a, uh, is a, is a bleak film, really, when you're uh, uh, dealing a lot with uh, PTSD. And uh, it was put out originally, uh, oh, God. It's a really, it's a mind-tripping of a film. I'll just show you. So this is Combat Shock right here. Recently put up by, uh, being put up by Severn Films on a limited edition. I got the original edition here. With, it had a bunch of features on it, by the way. Hard to believe this is a trauma release because it actually has features that relate to the film as opposed to like a lot of trauma releases where you get like features that actually have nothing to do with the movie. But no, there's like a... This one here has like the Never Been Seen Director's Cut, the original theatrical cut, audio commentary with Buddy... Giovanni, Giovanazzi, uh, just a bunch of stuff. So if you're a fan of these type of films, uh, it's a good movie. It's a bleak film. Now, you have to understand that when you go in. It's not like a, it's not an action. I wouldn't consider it a big action film. But it, it's, it's pretty bleak. This live stream keeps freezing up, does it really? Oh, man, I hope not. <clears throat> Shattered 99 was the best pr produced. Not, I thought we were getting today, too. How does trauma even work? Do they finance or distribute? They uh, do both. Uh, trauma back in the early days, what trauma did was they would make their own movies and uh, like Toxic Avenger and stuff like that, but they would also buy out like, uh, like bunches of films of, and distribute them. They were one of the early people to do that. And uh, they caught on really good. They were smart. They uh, got a bunch of movies that, uh, that they didn't make and you know, promoted them and sold them. And uh, in the early VHS days, they made, like, a, made a fortune off of a lot of films who were smart enough to like to buy like libraries and catalogs and stuff like that. So Troma actually distributes and uh, produces their own stuff as well. So they kind of, they're a jack of all, of all trades, I guess. One of my favorite kinos, I think that everybody should have this one. Yeah, the East Coast version of Roger Corman is exactly true. <clears throat> Except Roger Corman probably got better production values in a lot of movies than, uh, than Troma does. But uh, Now I did get to meet Lloyd Coppin, he's a great guy. Uh, we talked for a while. Uh, we talked about it. his daughter was actually, uh, yeah. but uh, she was actually uh, where was she at the time? I think she was in Israel. Uh, so uh, he was a bit worried about his daughter at the time, and uh, so we talked. We were talking to him, to him about that. But Sugar Hill, if you got this one, guys, whoever gets Sugar Hill, uh, this is a really good black exploitation film. Uh, Robert Quarry from uh, Count Yorga actually plays a villain in this. Uh, excellent film. Yeah, the material the other day. I still have to get it. It's really fun, actually. You got the. It, it, it's really good. It's like so. There is a few features on here. We got our audio commentary with the director, on camera interview with the stars. Uh, but I really, I really do like. Some. Yeah, you're right. When James Umbrella did put a set with all three Blob films, so we got like Blob and the Return of the Blob, or Beware of the Blob, and the '88 film. <clears throat> Great score on this one um fantastic score and great film as well and uh, anthony quinn and yafet koto in a uh, across 10th street i think it was who was it skin slip who actually recommended the this one because of the score in that uh really good film i know all your films uh, oh, jackie brown song ah. <clears throat> Check this one. If you like black exploitation, definitely check this one out. It's, it's just a great film overall. It's a good drama as well. Speaking of like really cool black exploitation, Yafet Koto is an extremely underrated actor, uh, sadly, but uh, 
That's it. We gotta. You, that's why we keep talking about these guys so that they uh, so that they get known, and they get known in the places where it matters with the fans. So that's uh, that's where these people need to get known at. Do I have the TV show Moonlighting? Oh, I don't know. I used to have like the first season of it, but I lost it in my in my move. Uh, I need the, I need Moonlighting. I grew up with Moonlighting. I was a huge fan of the series, and I love the uh, the my favorite black exploitation film, Sugar Hill. Actually, to be honest with you, it's big. the way Cameron's FX films seem to hold up, I think he would have made a, sh a Spider-Man movie. He actually did work on. He did was working on a Spider-Man script. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, yeah, the original Gangsters from the 1990s. I don't think I do actually. I got to get that one. Welcome back, Savannah. Hopefully, it doesn't break up any this time. Uh, Continent comes to Harlem. Really great film. I love this cover, by the way, guys. It's an amazing cover. So we're getting into black exploitation territory here. Love this movie. Another Yafet Koto film. Truck Turner. Larry Cohen in the nineties, still good. I like Larry Cohen. I'm a huge Larry Cohen fan. I got Full Moon High, man, and that's not one of his best films. Shaft. Shaft is a great film. I just really love Sugar Hill. <clears throat> Dolomite's awesome too, by the way, guys. If you don't have Dolomite, it's worth having. Do I think black exploitation is racist or problematic? I actually, uh, that's I'm not a. I actually wouldn't say it is because uh, most of these films were actually done by, uh, especially like a lot of them were done were actually done by uh, black directors and actors. Uh, more so, like pretty much taking taking the power back and making the films. I'm sure that they're ones that were more ex exploitative, but I do think that uh, it is pretty much. Uh, Cotton Comes Out is a great film, yeah. Uh, Shaft apparently is a descendant of Django. It's canon, really? That is cool. I like that. Uh, Truck Turner. This is really fun. It is. It's really fun. And I guess, you know, he, he was known for doing the theme song, Shaft, but uh, he does a great job. Now, this one has two versions of the film, and this time, James, I can actually tell you which version that I, that I like best, if you want to know. And uh, this here is No Retreat, No Surrender. <clears throat> There are, it has the original cut and as the, the uh, pretty much the longer cut, the international cut of it. Broomhilda von Shaft, wife of Django. Yeah, that's, that's right. <clears throat> Talking Black Space, did I ever see Sholin Dolomite? Oh, no, I don't think I have. That, I gotta check that one out. That's actually Grandmaster, that's, that's an idea. <clears throat> Sholin Dolomite. Out of sight. Yeah, me too. I actually saw this in theater. Uh, do you think he's crazy? I asked because there's a scene, and I didn't really think of it when I was watching it as a kid. It was just like cool, and it's a Bruce Lee thing. But there's a scene where he's like talking to Bruce Lee. The French connection was negative. Yeah. Uh, the, <clears throat> but uh, no retreat, no surrender. Yeah. It seems like the ghost of Bruce Lee is like training him. You got three movies in the say Not there were not more human centipede. I hope. Uh, what were they, Savannah? And there's a scene where his friend looks in the window, and uh, he, he doesn't see anyone there. It's, he only sees him, like, pretty much talking to himself. And all of a sudden, there's a realization, like, oh, my God. <laughs> did, are you, did you buy too much? Have you, or is it the films you bought? Did you buy some Vinegar Sooner Madolph films? Is that it, Savannah? Uh, <clears throat> or is it just mad that you bought too many this week? <clears throat> He's a fan that he believes he's being trained. It, 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 it's, it's like kind of freaky. The guy who played Bruce Lee in No Retreat is, oh yeah, he is actually. Devil for Bruce in Game of Death. This is one I originally was going to pick up, my better half. Uh, got this one because the, the cast, uh, especially if you like, uh, like French films, are uh, Blue Ice Mary Center. Blue Ice, I, I have. Not, not, not recently. My dad got it, actually. I think he recently got it. I, uh, I, don't, I don't mind the adult films from Vinegar Syndrome because the adult films of Vinegar Syndrome puts out by far and large are usually ones with stories and uh, the actual films. I don't know. I'm saying it's not negative. Excellent. Uh, no, I don't think it's like fairly, uh, I don't think it's like a negative. I think Black Exploitation is actually kind of like where, when they came in and took their, uh, took, pretty much took, took films and said like, We've been like made, you know, we, they've been making films with, uh, with black actors a certain way. And all of a sudden they're like, uh, you know, we're going to make our own. Have you seen the movie Green Ice? It's Cape from the 80s. I do, I don't remember it. 
Not good stories, though, even if they have one. Which one? Oh, you mean like the adult films? Actually, yes, yeah, some of them do, Sophie. Uh, I'd I have to disagree with that one. Uh, certain movies like, uh, they call it Murder Baby, which was also known as Dixie Ray Hollywood Star, actually has a decent story to it. Uh, there was a... There's a few that actually have some really cool stories, but you got the few and far between. You got to know where you're what, what you're going at. Pick a few in the sale. Take and pale him. One, two, three. Big country. Short eyes. Quater mass experiment. Great film, by the way. Quater mass experiment is. I love the Quater mass films. I wish they put out the rest of them. The other two. Sicilian clan. Hot and spicy pizza girls. Actually, yeah, Bob Chin is good for that. Hey, welcome back, Ancestry Maze. I've heard about Black Dynamite. Oh, I love Black Dynamite. They had a cartoon series too and a comic book. Uh, Black Diamond is one of my favorite movies. Explains where she had universe. <clears throat> you remember the film Green Eyes? That's me. <laughs> no, actually, I, I barely, but I do. So, Blood Soccer's from Outer Space. Um, I think I've seen it years ago. I haven't seen the the Vinegar Syndrome edition, which I'm sure is going to be look amazing. Uh, this one here has a great like cast, by the way. Uh, Elaine Delon. Jean Gabin, of course, who played the original one, the original, the French version of Margot. Yes, it is two discs, actually. I'll show you. And uh, Lena Ventura. So there's the both the U.S. and international cut on their own discs for a change. That's a uh, that's a rarity. The outing, that is a cool movie. And Blood, you got Blood Beach. Uh, Ramon, Ramon and Bizu. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a while since I've seen. John Jingaba uh, is a fantastic actor. Uh, I'm a I'm a big fan, and I gotta introduce those movies that I didn't have of him from uh, from my better half, who was uh, Moroccan, and French films were uh, were very pre prevalent in uh, in Morocco. They uh, get a lot of their uh, cinema from France. This is one that I liked. I think it could have been a lot better, but I liked it, and that is the Last Embrace with Roy Scheider. I didn't quite know how I felt about it. Oh, European gangster films are, are incredible. Uh, and, you know, everything like stuff like Rafifi to like uh, which true release. I actually like to know that myself. Bullet has one of the greatest chase scenes of all time. <clears throat> you know what else has a great chase scene? Don't make fun of me here. Amsterdam. Amsterdam has a great chase scene. Not everybody loves this movie, but I am a person that truly adores this film that I'm about to show you. No word of a lie, I love this movie. I saw it in theater uh, back in the day and I watched, rewatched it and I loved it again. And some people hate on it and it actually, screenplay by Larry Cohen, I the jury. I'm a huge like kind of noirish fan. There's a six, gone 60 seconds. You know, they used to show up in like the uh, Walmart for the longest time in like the $5 bin and now you don't see it anymore. Korean films. Wait till my uh, my kids get here. My uh, my youngest has a huge Korean f like she uh, he speaks Korean. Uh, am I going to get the TV show of The Master from Kino? I'm eventually I'm going to get it down the road. I'm a huge fan of The Master. Uh, show Kazuji's in it. I'm a huge fan of Show Kazuji. And uh, you know, <laughs> can't even count that. Uh, I uh, yeah I I've I've slowed down a lot to be to be to be fair, but uh, Andre, oh, yeah. You got great taste, Sophie. And my favorites, I love Lena Ventura. So he's like the French uh, Bogart, really. Oh yeah, uh, speaks Korean. And my oldest actually, uh, who also he got to after a while, right? Um, actually speaks uh, a bit of Japanese. So uh, I'm not sure which Japanese dialect it is, uh, but it's one of the Jap. Uh, the Jury is a great film. Uh, yeah, like you got Armando Santi, Barbara Carrera. Alan King, Lauren Landon, of course, from, uh, if you've seen uh, Mania Cops, she's uh, starring in that one. Jeffrey Lewis, who was amazingly underrated, was amazingly underrated, like, uh, character actor. Jeffrey Lewis is one of those guys that you don't really know him, and then you see him in a movie, and he just steals the scenes he's in. Incredible actor. Uh, I'm not around anymore. Par Sovino is in this one as well. Classic Shaw Brothers films. I love the Golden Harvest Shaw Brothers movies. Uh, they can, they can uh, but... Uh, you get good ones like the, you know, the 36 of the Cha Chambers of Shaolin. I think that was the Shaw Brothers. Uh, the, the, you know, Flying Guillotines. Oh, there's a lot of good movies. I mean, even the one they did with Hammer, like the Seven Bri Brothers meet, uh, you know, Seven, Va Seven Golden Vampires. 
uh, a lot of fun. So if you've seen the movie Walk, uh, Walk Beneath, we well not Walk Behind the Tombstone, Seven Ups, Great Car Chase. You guys have some good, got some awesome movie chases. Try to watch more known ones. Yeah. Do you know what I mean when I die? See this movie here? This is the same character that Liam Neeson plays in Walk Behind the Walks Beyond, Beneath, whatever, Walk Through the Tombstones. That movie, remember that one? Same character. Very different. I will, I'm actually trying to learn to speak French. Uh, because I work with a, I will well be, well, eventually, well, we've got a, a condo in Morocco. Walk Among the Tombs. Thank you, 13 Wolfman. I knew I had it somewhere. Uh, in there. Same character. This is a very different film. Hal Ashby is a fantastic director. He's a fantastic editor. An amazingly amazing editor. This is not the film Hal Ashby wanted to make. Oh, he wanted to make Eight Moon Wills to, Moon Wills to Die. But there are some, this is a really, this is a, it's, it's a good film, guys, but it is the drama behind the scenes of this film is extremely fascinating. The interviews, because you're going to look at this movie and you're going to see all these great actors, you're going to see all this amazing stuff, and there's going to be times when you're going to be like, where did they go with this? Belushi and Ritter. Yeah. Uh, I like Belushi and Ritter. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong with, with anything with Ritter, to be honest with you. But I'm a, I'm a, then again, I'm a fan, so uh, some way, sometimes I can be blinded. I, I love this movie, but it's a little bit challenging in the way that uh, it, it, it shifts. But it's realistic. Uh, there's like a, a scene in this movie that's actually like, it looks like it's kind of insane, like where the hell are they going with this? But it's, when you think about it, there's a warehouse sequence that's actually extremely realistic. Remember Invasion USA with uh, Chuck Norris? Remember that really crazy, like super action-y Invasion USA? It had a sequel. And I really, really like the sequel. It's one that I thought they were going to follow up on. Oh, I love Jackie Chan. Uh, he is a lot of his choreography. He was a he was a huge fan of uh, Buster Keaton, for instance. So you imagine you're saying in the theaters? Are we around the same age? No, I think you're younger than me. Actually, you're younger than me. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, Avenging Force, by the way, guys, is the sequel to Invasion USA. Michael Dudikoff is actually playing the same character. Uh, that uh, that he plays and uh, that that uh, Chuck Norris plays in Invasion USA. You know, you're actually you're older than me, dude. I for real because you look younger than me. Uh, Avenging Force guys, definitely worth seeing. A really cool movie. One of Dudikoff's better films, I think, in my in my opinion. One of the better Dudikoff films. I do recommend if you haven't picked this one up. It's a bit of a sleeper hit. Definitely check it out. Speaking of Dudikoff, I am a Dudikoff fan, and I had to pick up River of Death. Uh, this is like a uh, kind of a period piece, and uh, Alison McLean's River of Death, Michael Dudikoff, Robert Vaughn, three years. That means I, th I think I know right, son. Uh, Donald Pleasance, Herbert Lom, L.Q. Jones. What an amazing cast, right? I kind of dig that film. So that picture does not look like Mark Dudikoff right there, not in my opinion anyway. Looks like Mark Dudikoff with a fro or something like that. Now, as you guys know, I'm a huge Charles Bronson fan. Break hard pass. Do you know how many times I almost picked this one up again, not realizing that I'd owned it? At least four or five, at least four or five Kino sales have I went in and like said, oh, I gotta buy Charles Bronson's Break Hard Pass. Put it in my cart, went downstairs, checked. Oh wait, I own Charles Bronson's Break Hard Pass. Again, another Alistair McLean film. What's left? Well, uh, a couple sets. <clears throat> oh, you had a question? Ooh, questions. It's a good film. It's uh, definitely worth getting. Uh, there's one called Kingdom of the North. Oh, I think it's called Kingdom of the North. Uh, God, Emperor of the North. Uh, not probably, really good film. I'll get into that one these days. Ever about something over and over not remembering buying it. Uh, probably a couple times, yeah. Uh, 
do I get many Criterion films? Yeah, I'm actually going to do a Criterion video down the road. I did like an alternative Criterion video uh, just recently. And uh, I think people get more into my horror stuff. But uh, I, I did do like an alternative Criterion video. And I will do a, one, a video of my Criterion stuff. I've actually, I don't have a large collection, but I got a decent collection, I think. Would you make a stream but movies you have not opened or seen? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually something I can actually do on the road. There's a lot of movies I haven't seen, I'm, I'm sure. I know. Narrow Margin needs a Blu-ray. And that's the original Narrow Margin. There's a remake, guys. But the original Narrow Margin is an incredible film. William Friedkin does an amazing audio commentary for it. Uh, it definitely deserves a Blu-ray. I think more film noir needs to, need to get Blu-ray releases, in my opinion. They, they really need to. Uh, I also think that, you know what an underrated thing is? Three copies of Sleepy Hollow. Uh, I love that film. And, uh, you know, I was watching back in the day before, well, uh, the, what was it? The, sh the channel that tanked, uh, Channel Awesome. Uh, is it with the train? Emperor of the North? Yeah, Emperor North is, is on a, with the train. Uh, but uh, there was like the Channel Awesome thing, and he had like, what's his name? Nostalgia Critic? That's it, right? He did like uh, Sleepy Hollow. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, uh, he did a review, and he said, yeah, Sleepy Hollow actually better than people thought. And I'm like, I never thought Sleepy Hollow was a bad film. So he said, did you know there was a company called Hammer Films? And I'm like, yeah. Buy such Critic. Do I know there's a company named Hammer Films? Slightly. A little bit. How did you not know that? You're a nostalgia critic. That's what you do. Apparently not very well. The Depot of Freeling Collection. Spoof of Hammer. There, there is actually a spoof of Hammer. It's a uh, carry on uh, screaming. Uh, but uh, no, you, uh, if you watch a lot of Tim Burton stuff, Tim Burton's a huge Hammer fan. And he tries to put like a Hammer stuff in there. Yeah, I know. I, I, I lost. Uh, even before the whole thing happened. That's where I lost them. You mean Hammer the Tool? <laughs> yes. Why, of course. Or MC Hammer. Did you know there was a hammer? Can't touch this. This is a great set, by the way, guys. The Inspector rolling the Rat Fink and the Aardvark and Tijuana. T I know he still, he still makes videos, but uh, honestly, I read the doc. I ain't going there again, man. <clears throat> I'll still watch Brad because I think Brad Sam Snob is only there basically out of loyalty because he was with him for so long type of thing and uh, he feels like he owes him something. I don't think he does. But yeah. Earliest movie theater in memory. Uh, st that is a really good first movie theater. Uh, age three and a half or four uh, I'm pretty sure it was. I saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre at Drive. That was one, that's my earliest like memory. The Iron Maiden scene. Oh. Sleep Hollow is such an underrated film. Animation, guys. Check it out. Speaking of film noir, and a really good set that's actually probably fairly cheap right now, if you're a film noir fan, yeah, you definitely owe it to yourself to have this set. Exorcist. Isn't it kind of cool that we all saw classic films at, at an early age? Kind of like it stamped us like from like really early on. Were there any movies as a kid your parents did not want you to watch that you sneaked to watch? Probably a lot. I didn't. I wasn't raised by my parents. Uh, actually, my uh, I was raised by my grandparents, uh, so it was it was different. And uh, they were like uh, older at the time, uh, so uh, there was a bit of an age like gap. So I pretty much got I got away with a lot. So I got to watch a lot of films. There were definitely films I snuck in. Uh, they you know to be totally honest, like I'm when I was a kid I. I was I would go in like 13 or 14 years old and I would go and rent like the films that like my friends would be scared to rent like uh, like like adult films for instance back in the day like uh, I would go in I would go into that the place that like a curtain go in and I would like grab the adult film and I would say okay I want to rent this and they'd rent it to me for some reason I don't think I looked any younger actually I got carded until I was like into my late 20s so I definitely didn't look older I just had that Dark Force Entertainment they do these awesome driving double features I've heard of them but I don't have any of the stuff I don't think. I definitely would like to check him out, though. But film noir set, grandparents watch, or did they influence your movie watching? 
my grandparents, uh, well, my grandfather, uh, my pop, watched like a, did you really? I like that film. <clears throat> um, watched a lot of like westerns. I grew up watching a lot of like uh, the, uh, a lot of the Mom Paquetto movies. Uh, I saw those, The Egg and I, of course, and uh, all the, uh, all the Mom Paquetto series of films. I'm still here. You're making dinner. I am still here. See this? If you like film noir, Polly, this is a really good one. Uh, Witness the Murder is really good, too. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Barbara Stanwyck. Yeah. And Stuart Sanders. Bela Lugosi, Franklin Gella, Chris Lee, and Gary Oldman. Oh, they're the ones that die, Frank. So, yeah. Clay Pigeons. It's been a while since this. Check this one out, guys. If you don't, if you don't get set, this really is one worth getting. I like Gary Oldman; he's a great actor. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of uh, that Dracula film when it originally came out, and it was because of actually I got an actor that I do like, Bull for Joey. Yeah, they're just right there. Just some decent stuff here. We got like uh, Big House USA. I'm I'm a Broderick Crawford fan. So I like his stuff. Ralph Meeker, I really love. Uh, if you know one of my favorite films, then you. Go know Ralph Meeker is in it. And, uh, yeah, Kiss Me Deadly. Got those noir sets separately as they were released, did you? See, I, I didn't, so when I saw this set, I had to grab it. Storm Fear, which is the one that was just mentioned. Original Scarface on blue. I don't think it's on blue. I know that it, it, you probably got the DVD because it came with the uh, Blu-ray for the Scarface remake set. It's most loud of Stoker's <sighs> inspiration, Vladdy, but... It it was, but uh, I don't really think that's where Stoker was going with it. Let's be honest, Stoker had a lot of little inspirations along the way with like what he was doing. Dracula, if you read Dracula, it's not one of my favorite novels. I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't a huge fan. Every Robert Aldrich movie's good. Scarface Warner Brothers. I think so. I got the Scarface on. I got Scarface, the Steel Book. Uh, if you can get it, the Steel Book has like the original Scarface on it. And that's a, uh, it's a really, really good movie. Four for Texas, not good. I didn't, I was going to buy that one, actually. I didn't pick it up. Uh, do you know there was an original Psycho, like, not with Vince Vaughn? Uh, wow. <laughs> no, I don't know about that film. Elizabeth Bathory, too, yeah. <clears throat> Howard Hawks, baby. Howard Hawks rocks. I didn't realize until I was saying it that that would come across as kind of like, Rye. Anyway, I said I was going to share my olive stuff. Wait right there. I just got a few things. I'll be right back. Howard Hawks did a lot of stuff, man. I did some awesome westerns. Alrighty. I came back and I brought my olives. I wanted my, my grandmother's uh, on my pin side. My last name is Pin. Uh, her uh, what's that? olive. <laughs> so, you guys know, like, Hard Hawks directed the original Scarface in 1932. Yes, he did. <clears throat> and I love that. That has Boris Karloff in it. One of his earlier roles. Sweater, which I was able to wear, which I was able to wear sweaters during this time. I uh, don't hear you can. I remember seeing Bring a Baby. It made me get back in the black, black and white movies. Oh, great stuff. Shark. Burt Reynolds. Pretty stash. East Black Olives. <laughs> right at the can. An Italian thing. Yeah, it must be. I'm not an olive fan. My, uh, my better half loves olive. You got that Shark DVD? Yeah. I haven't got this one even open yet. I gotta watch it. The Deadly Bees. Yes, it is Amicus. It is kind of a, It's early stuff, though. I mean, like, uh, it became the stash. The reboot is superior. Say, oh, no, no. I got like, I, I, I love the reboot. I'm a huge but Ryan De Palma fan. But I like Paul Muni, man. I'm a real big Paul Muni fan. The Deadly Bees. 
worth watching, definitely. Not the best B film, but the best piece. As you're going to see, some of these here are not open. I got all these from a... Do you got John Wayne? I wish I did. There's actually a John Wayne movie that I want called The Quiet Man, and I think that was put out by all of it. It's actually one of my father's favorite movies. Picked up this one. As you can see, these are all the H&V dollar ones. Uh, smoke, uh, Summer and Smoke. It's Tennessee Williams. I'm used... I, uh, Big J, okay. In old California. Amicus, cool alternative to Hammer. Did you see the... Am, Am, Hammer vs. Amicus videos that I did. I actually did like a, I was going to do a bunch of versus videos and I still will do some down the road but I uh, I started doing them and I uh, I moved and uh, my channel changed a bit. Mm. But I'm a huge Tennessee Williams fan. Of course you guys know I was an actor growing up. That's you know that's what, that's what I was going to do. I uh, pretty much have done every Tennessee Williams play you can imagine. Here's a weird little film. Shanks. Marceau, Marceau. A kind of a horror film, I guess you could call it. <clears throat> Directed by William Castle, actually. Different. I, I haven't watched it since I got it. I've only seen it, like, years upon years ago. As you can see, a lot of these olive ones aren't open. These were bought literally on the last day that h &V was closing up. Do you like Shanks? It's different, huh? I reckon all the differences. This is probably one of the more like uh, mainstream ones that I got for the from all of. And I actually I'm a huge fan of this. <clears throat> How's my channel changed? Watch you when you had that colorful painting in the background and the <clears throat> and the blinds that would stay closed. <laughs> I don't have the boogans yet. I really want it. <clears throat> uh, well, my channel has pretty much stayed like on. Uh, yeah, it is different. I've gone live. I guess is one of the big things I've tried to. Uh, hopefully, gotten a little more. I got a little better. Like over the, over, I hope I've gotten a little better over the over the years, but I've I've tried to pretty much just trace, stay true to who I am. I'm I'm a movie geek. I'm a movie fan. I I love films. I, I kind of like, uh, it's really is like when people, I'm a guy that actually like seriously loves movies. So, but yeah, I think I I think I've gotten hopefully a little bit better. I learned a bit. Uh, got a mic, uh, which was a complaint for a long time, was that I didn't have a mic. Next up is a Danny Kay film. <clears throat> do you ever do streams? With, I've actually done streams with other YouTubers. Look in the background there. Yeah, the look in the background is definitely better, in my opinion. Uh, I've actually done streams with uh, 4K Cinema HD. Uh, me and Logan Toxic run a couple streams together. Larry Clark's Kids in the Blue Lagoon. Oh, I remember liking those films back then. Kids was like, uh, it was a harsh film, but it was a real film. It was realistic. Uh, so, and I can understand why it got, like, uh, you know, but it was, it was, actually, that's what you saw. That's what was really going on. And some people don't like to think about that fact, but, uh, you know, it was. Blue Lagoon, honestly, it was, that, it was, it was okay. I like, the, then they did Return to Blue Lagoon. I think I saw you on once on a horror one. Yeah, I did, I did a few. I mean, like, uh, and there were some I did some great ones I did some, what, I, what I would consider hopefully some great ones Streetwise is a fantastic movie uh, but uh, there's a, yeah I've done it with, with, with a few different people and I did like a, a, a group one for a while with, uh, with a bunch of people and I'll be honest with you why I've stayed of like doing a lot of streams and stuff like that is because there's a lot of like just different like drama and stuff that, uh, that goes on within in the in sometimes in, a, in the community like if you uh, really aren't close close and then you know people have different like types of personalities and stuff so do you ever have time to game <laughs> uh are you like me and i have about 15 20 games? I, I don't have enough games actually uh i i play a bit of fortnite every once in a while just to rewind on what rewind on, so that's how much you watch movies online but uh, i got like uh i play my switch a lot and uh yeah two movies to watch i got me my, my but usually I'll come down here to the retro gaming thing. I got my PS4 and my Xbox One and my Switch upstairs. But I usually, put, uh, see, I don't buy Steam stuff. Uh, Steam's got great stuff. Why don't you do some different things with people? Yeah, I did. I did a few, and some were like, uh, yeah, some were good, some were uh, different experiences. But on the double, I'm a huge Danny K fan. Anything Danny K. And the modern model of a modern major general. I was watching. I was listening to like some radio plays. Do it on the original Nintendo Entertainment System. That there, no. 
I did. If you watch, I'm look at my. I did, but when I got it, it uh, it didn't work. Uh, watch movies and occasionally Mortal Kombat. Oh, Mortal Kombat. But I have in my collection, in my retro collection, I got a Retron for uh, for original Nintendo. I actually, that started me. I bought it for like twenty bucks at a at Atomic Records. I have original Super NES. I've got the uh, Nintendo 64. I've got the uh, Silver GameCube. I've got the uh, PS2. I have the uh, Wii U, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, the Nintendo Switch, and I've got the Game Boy, original Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, original. I've got a Game Boy, uh, I've got a 3DS. And I've got a DSi. That's all I've got so far when it comes to like gaming systems. So this is New York. I actually uh, was listening to like uh, some like radio plays, and uh, Henry Morgan was on was on a couple of them, and that's why I ended up picking up this one. That was a dollar. So Meteor Man with Robert Townsend, Super Nintendo. Oh, Donkey Kong Country is a great game. Um, I play a lot of like Super Mario World on my uh, Super Nintendo. I uh, come down here and I just like play Super Mario World for hours. I just love that one. I love the fact you can just like leave a level in Super Mario World and go back to an earlier level that you've already beaten. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, and you, then you just get stuff you might need and go back to a level that you can't beat. Meteor Man. Great film. Your 3DS Mickey Mouse. I did have a 3DS Mickey Mouse one, uh, but I actually changed that. I actually I went to a New God Awards. I got to get New God Awards down the road. I actually had the... Oh, Carlos, thank you so much for coming in. Have a great evening, and I uh, hope to see you next time here in the movie club. Breeders. Fun film. Uh... Way more fun than I thought it was going to be. I got it for graduation years ago. You have been watching my channel for a while, so if you haven't yet. Uh, yes, I did, actually. And we were going on a, a trip, and you used to watch me several years ago. Thank you, by the way. Thanks for watching again. Better go to bed now, too. <laughs> when will your next live stream be? It will probably be on Saturday, unless something comes up uh, in the next few days that I live stream early. But I usually do my live streams on Saturday. So these live streams, we're learning so much about films we have in the earth. We want to break out of a comfort system. Uh, oh, so I'm, I'm glad that you guys have been, and you guys are awesome. And um, if you guys haven't checked out Nicole and Kyle, definitely do. Uh, they are uh, awesome guys, and uh, they do some amazing stuff on you here. They're inspirational for me, who's trying to get in better shape, and those guys are definitely guys to watch. Good night from Wisconsin. And I'll, I guess I'm going to... Do you buy movies just for the sake of it add to your collection? I buy movies I love. Uh, I never buy movies just to buy them. Uh, that's not a, that, I've never been that type of uh, collector. You're never going to see me, well, rarely where you're going to see me like, oh, this movie, this movie, and this movie, and just go on from there. I uh, got into much more B-grade, or was C-grade because of these. <laughs> so, uh, I hope that's a good thing. Uh, but no, I love, I, I really do love movies, and I, I watch the movies that I, that I get. Uh, sometimes I get like backlogged and I have to watch a few like a uh, few later on but a lot of the movies that I buy I've already seen um, and I just get into watch them I'll watch the features and I'll rewatch the movies again but uh, I don't really buy to buy I know I did probably did that for a while but uh, most everything I got is means something to me uh, there's usually a story behind every film that I got uh, Night of the Demons, for instance, Olive. I'm a huge fan of this film. I remember, and that's Night of Demons too. Uh, I was a huge fan of the Night of the Demons films. I was a huge fan of Kevin S. Tenney. Uh, this one, I'm buying movies that I think sound cool, but I've never watched. Uh, that's really cool, cool way to go. I blind bought a lot of films. And uh, sometimes it's a great thing. Sometimes uh, it's a not so great thing. But either way, I find that I enjoy uh, doing it. A movie junkie, the only movies I buy is because I like the movie. Yeah, not just to get it. You will find people on and off YouTube that uh, may not seem sound the most sincere when it comes to the films they buy. <clears throat> and that's okay. Everybody's got their own reason for buying. Everybody's got their own reason for collecting. Uh, me, it's uh, I love movies. I love watching films. Uh, 
pretty sure passionate about all the movies. That's why you quickly, oh, thank you. Uh, that's high praise. And uh, that means a lot, actually. It really does. Uh, but yeah, when I, uh, when I talk about this stuff, it's just uh, stuff that I super love. And uh, when I don't talk about it, when, if it's a movie that I don't know very well, I will tell you. I'll say, I haven't watched this movie for a while or I haven't seen this movie yet. Uh, like when James asked me, which, which, you know, which, what, which version of this movie is better? And if I haven't seen both those versions, I'm not going to say it didn't. <laughs> And and you say okay, I liked you know I like this version better. Uh, I'll say James, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you once I find out. Uh, but uh, no, I love movies. And with that, guys, we went through the Kinos, went through the Oz. I didn't go through my Redemption. And the reason I didn't do that, guys, you saw Demons movies available to Sato, really. Hey, Marcus, what are those white colored DVD cases behind you? Uh, these right here, Arrow Video. If you watch my Arrow video stream, Tim, I think, didn't you watch my Arrow video stream? Uh, would you pardon my Arrow video stream? Uh, the Arrow video films are, uh, Arrow video is one of my favorite companies of all time. Uh, they really got me, like, excited about collected films. For a long time, Kino was a company that I thought, that I knew, for, oh, the Arrow, yeah, the original Arrows, uh, back in the day when they were, like, DVDs and that. Kino was a company that for a long time I thought, oh, they put out decent films, but there's no features on them. And so I would pass Kino by, and so they're a little expensive. Uh, then a Kino sale came along, and I had a couple Kinos in my collection. I didn't realize there were Kinos originally. Uh, I started buying Kino, and uh, H&B came around, and I started buying some Kino from there. And I really got into the, uh, they had like great transfers. They put in a lot of features. So are those error horror titles? Well, uh, sort of. Night Child and Super Bitch really aren't like horror titles. Night Child may be a bit. Pieces is horror. Tweevil Eyes is uh, Argento, Card Players are Argento, Sleepless is Argento, Steindel Syndrome is Argento, Terry the Hopper is Argento, All in the Death is a little crazy. Uh, Savage Streets is fun, I love that one, love Savage Streets. Christmas Evil, again another favorite of mine, Slaughter High I love, and Beyond Reanimator, autographed by Jeffrey Combs, which I'm super proud about. Uh, but yeah, no, Akino's company I got into later on. They started putting out a lot of stuff that I liked. And then I started finding like these action movies that they put out. And like these 80s films that nobody else was putting out. Errol Brent. Oh, Conan Tate. Great film, man. Uh, I almost bought Arrow tonight. It's the most knowledgeable guy, film guy I've ever, no, uh, I've ever watched. I know my shit. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan. I grew up like watching like uh, probably like you guys like you guys and like I do like watch other like movie YouTubers now. Uh, I was going to buy like Arrow actually. I was going to go for Prisoner Scorpion, and uh, I was going to pick up the Bloodthirsty Trilogy. Uh, I mentioned here at the beginning of the uh, of the stream, but Diabolic DVDs uh, shipping to Canada was forty two dollars, so uh, American. So. If you know that, that rounds out to about seventy dollars here in Canada, so couldn't do that. So I bought uh, I bought ten, like uh, Kino ones. So I bought. Oh, I really want last sales on left. Arrow website. I'm waiting for the next sale. I'm a huge. I buy from the Arrow website a lot. Now the last time I bought from the Marcus, it took a long time for their stuff to come, and I mean months. Uh, for about, I think it was about three months before my uh, my arrows came. Uh, during the last one, they were getting the website changed over, and I know some other people as well. Had some issues. I'm hoping that they've got that like straightened up. I'm actually waiting to hear back on like uh, to see how one of their like kind of flash sales go, to see what uh, what people think and to see how quickly people are getting their uh, getting their orders because uh, they've changed up some of their uh, the people behind the scenes. So we'll see. Usually it's a uh, arrow sales. They usually have like a two big sales around like a twice a year. You're going to see one like uh, later in the year. Usually around I think around November. Uh, I think there's one. There's one in one in April, really. I think April, April or May. I think there's one in April or May. Arrow has a sale, and every once in a while they'll have like these uh, smaller sales. Now, if an Arrow sale comes on, uh, I'll uh, I'm actually uh, I'll like to let let you guys know. Uh, right now, there if you're in, in the in the U.S., for instance, Arrow Diabolic DVD has an Arrow sale. There's a Criterion's Barnes and Noble sale. The next one, uh, I don't know. You might be right. They do usually have two big ones a year. July, yeah, is it in July? I know the last one's in November. July, yeah, that's it, yeah. Twice a year. Barnes Noble, yeah. 
Logan Toxic, guys. Uh, if you uh, watch Logan Toxic, uh, he has a lot of like the, he's got the Criterion sale. How good is their sale? Uh, I think their sale is fantastic. Uh, it's surprised to stay in business. There's a lot of companies. It's hard for brick and mortar sto stores to stay in business. Or you mean Criterion? Criterion stuff is expensive, but Criterion's got like this, uh, they've got the brand recognition in there right now. 50% off is good. Uh, it's like what you pay for normal movie. <laughs> uh, but uh, I got the Zadiichi set one year with when during a Criterion sale. I love that set. Uh, Blind Swordsman, I do recommend it. It's like if you like the, those type of films. July 5th. No Barnes Noble. They, oh, yeah. But I think that sale really helps them. It really saves them when it comes to a lot of that stuff. Uh, criterion transfers are incredible. Now, the original transfer they did, like some of the early stuff, uh, are uh, okay. Uh, oh, man, you got a Barnes Noble down the street. Dude, I would like spend a fortune during the Criterion sale there. What I really want and that I haven't got yet is the... Uh, oh, God. You wish you had... The, Quiet Man, yeah. Your favorite one is Island, Island in the Sky? Uh, yeah, uh, Quiet Man was just one of those. It was a different film for uh, for John Wayne. The Olympic set? I'm not sure on that one. Uh, it's kind of, it's expensive. I mean, it's one I wouldn't mind chancing. With Criterion, I don't mind taking blind buys. I do uh, blind buys on Criterion more than any other company, to be honest with you. Uh, when it comes to like just blind buying a film, I usually feel safe with Criterion. I haven't really seen anything that I haven't liked. Um, oh, 13th Wolfman, have a great night there, and uh, I'm actually on my way out here in a couple minutes too, uh, but next time, tell you what, maybe on Saturday night, guys, maybe we'll do Criterion, because I've been wanting to do it for a while, I'll show you guys my entire Criterion collection here, uh, not as like ma massive as like Dean and DVDs, Dean and DVD, by the way, has, has a great Criterion uh, one, I've watched Antichrist Criterion, not yet, uh, though I've seen the film. Are you going to get female troubles? I might actually. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get it right down the way. Yeah, I know Dean doesn't make uh, make them anymore right now. I know he used to do some streams for a while. Uh, Dean's a really nice guy. I actually got to uh, get to talk to Dean quite a few times, and uh, he was like uh, he was a really a sweetheart of a guy. He actually is as nice. He does seem to be as nice. Um, and I uh, I got to say I've always I've always enjoyed like uh, watching a lot of Dean stuff. I found him by uh, when I was during Barnes and Noble, and uh, talked to him. Actually, sent him a uh, birthday present like uh, one year. It was, like, it was the uh, Lucio Fulci Blue Underground like three set because he wasn't into horror so much. I was trying to get him into horror. See, so, oh, are you talking about uh, Movie Cave Dave? Uh, Movie Cave Dave is excellent. Uh, I still talk. Movie Cave Dave's birthday was uh, was today. Was today? Well, yesterday now. Uh, but yeah, Movie Cave Dave's birthday. So. Uh, Everybody out there, wish Movie Kid Dave a, a happy birthday because he's an awesome guy. I mean, he's a really, really nice guy, and uh, he's a guy that I can just I can vouch for as being like super genuine, uh, and definitely a fantastic. Was a fa he was a fantastic YouTuber. Very shy at first, would he wouldn't show himself on camera. Uh, I did streams with Movie Cave Dave. He turned forty one on Saturday. Happy early birthday! Remind me to wish you birthday again during the live stream here on Saturday. By the way, Tim, because I I shall do that. I won't sing happy birthday though. I've got a horrible singing voice. Probably used to do a lot of those too, but he's gone. Everyone is gone mostly. There's a lot of people gone now uh, that uh, they used to do stuff. Uh, I think uh, with Faligar, he went into doing like a lot of like uh, streaming stuff as well. Uh, there was a... Any parting Tim? Parting Tim? Can't make the live stream on Saturday. Oh, I have a friend's radio show. Nice. Well, congratulations on that. And uh, going to lunch with the family on Sunday. Nice. You deserve it, Tim. Have a good birthday. You, I hope you have an awesome birthday. Hope you get lots of like, lots of like cinema related stuff for your birthday. Get a cool movie. Uh, I think Falgar did like a lot of like uh, a lot of like streaming, like uh, video game streaming stuff, and kind of went towards in, in that direction more than uh, than films. But uh, I'm not sure. I, I think he does. I, does he? I think he still does some stuff every once in a while, uh, but more towards video game stuff. And uh, I like that stuff. I don't watch a lot of like streaming videos. Like I'm not a big like video game like stream watcher. I do like. Uh, I definitely like support the uh, 
the guys to do it, and you know, I and but I it's not me. I was I was listening to a friend's live radio show on Saturday nights, so usually busy on Saturday nights. Is it a cool live radio show? Is it something I should know about? I won't be able to watch watch it live, but I'll, yeah, everybody w- wish Tim a happy birthday. So it seems here a breakdown. Uh, I think we've all had like times when we've had like you know it's been like uh, I don't really like know or you know like to talk a lot about when people's like uh, like personal stuff, but uh, caught Radio Go Go. I'll give it a I'll give it a listen. I'll, I'll I'll look out for it. I don't know a lot of when it comes behind the scenes and stuff like that. I try I just try to stay out of the uh, out of the drama aspect of it. I, that's why we, you'll notice on on my channel I don't talk a lot about like politics. I don't talk a lot about like uh, like life stuff that's uh, that goes on uh, and uh, really a lot of that basically is because I want you to be able to come in here and uh, forget about all the stuff that goes on all the drama and whatever's going on in the world and just in, enjoy yourself and have a fun time talking about movies with other people and stuff like that so uh, that's kind of where I go with that uh, I try to keep yeah I, I do uh, I try to keep it about the films uh, some people like to get into like certain aspects of it and you know that's that's kind of cool I don't know anything about that uh, I wouldn't be able to talk on that one actually uh, that's not good if it is uh, that's like that trans is like something that's 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 close to my heart because uh, you know and I don't talk about it a lot but my uh, my my children are uh, are trans so uh, and some people don't know that actually when they uh, <clears throat> when they watch if they watch my channel. Oh, oh Tarragon! Oh, I I remember Angel Tarragon. Uh, he did uh, videos too, I think. I think didn't he do? He did like straight videos with with Falagar. Uh, I thought like they did like uh, I know there was like a bunch of like live streams and stuff. I thought they did those together. Uh, I could be wrong. I'm I'm kind of out of the loop when it comes to stuff like that. But no, yeah, I do have like. Uh, That's not good. My my kids both are. Uh, and so and I you know I don't talk about my my private life on here a lot, <laughs> but uh, you know hopefully that's not something that bothers people. But that's uh, you know I'm very proud of my kids. <clears throat> it's uh, it's not an easy decision to have to to make. And if when you decide something like that, you got a battle uh, ahead of you. So uh, all the power to uh, to Angel for like going forward with that. Uh, to be totally honest with you, because just walking out the door just just me uh uh you know it, it, it's you know there's a struggle but uh people that have to go through other things like that it's I definitely something that i uh i do feel like strongly towards with your kids yeah they are they're fun i mean i will they're coming here this summer i'm hoping to put them on uh, on camera they, if they want to they can come on camera <coughs> and uh and talk they do uh come into some of my videos and they're very my kids are very sardonic. Their humor is very much they they make fun of their dad a lot, and uh, they know their movies. They grew up with with uh, with with me, so uh, they got to watch a lot of films. Uh, some they wanted to watch, some probably they, they could have done without. But it's made them like uh, appreciate like uh, I I do streams like I try to do a stream on on Saturdays. I uh, I will be doing like a. I do random streams here, streams here and there. It basically depends. Like tonight, I bought some Kino films, and I haven't bought movies in a long time. It's not about politics. No, we shouldn't. James, you know, politics got me in trouble with somebody, so we're not going there. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> James knows all this stuff. Uh, James, actually, I've been attacking James for for quite a while, so. <clears throat> but no, yeah, there's, yeah, I got hatred from some people from stuff like that. Not gonna lie, guys. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, at the end of the day, everybody's got their own opinion on stuff, and uh, we don't always have to like the same things. We can always just uh, enjoy to uh, that that we that we love movies, uh, and uh, the and the, you know, and and live and let live. At the end of the day, yeah, that. This is what it's about. Harry in your pocket. It's specifically about Harry in your pocket. This movie right here with Trish Van Der. Uh, Van Der Veer. Uh, no, it's about movies. Uh, my channel's about movies. And uh, 
fun and life and passion. So I always recommend, guys, if you're into movies, whatever you're into, uh, you know, this is a movie club. It's chill. It's uh, We come here to talk about films and have a good time and just get away from stuff. And there we go. That's about as serious as I'm going to get tonight, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for joining me here in the movie club. I've had a fantastic time with you guys tonight. I'm so excited to get my Kino stuff come. As soon as I get it, guys, I was married to George C. Scott. Yeah, I know. He was with Colleen Dewhurst. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh-huh. You know your stuff, Sophie. You've been here a while, too. And you came back. Welcome back, by the way. If you were gone for a while, welcome back. And... Uh, Lots of great guys out there on the on the channels. Lots of great stuff, and my voice is going, and I got to talk for like eight hours tomorrow. That's my job. So, uh, lots of fun stuff coming up. Thank you guys for watching. I am Aaron. I'm Movie Prof. This is a weird angle. Thanks for joining the Movie Club, and I hope to see you guys here again on Saturday or whenever I get something come. I'll be doing like a. Uh, you really enjoy I look forward to having you back and uh, General the Destroyer. Everybody that came in tonight, you are all awesome, and uh, I'll see you soon because right now you can hear my voice. Like I said when I originally started my channel, it's time for tea.